beginning on my uh, far right, Eduardo Vargas works with Susan Richley, who you heard from earlier. Um, Eduardo is the deputy director for the Center of Faith-Based and Community Initiatives at USAID. Um, closest to me, James Lindsay, is the executive director of the Catholic Volunteer Network, um, and he can share a really a close view on what faith-based volunteering uh, looks like and feels like on the ground. And in the middle, Yasmin Shaheen McConnell is the Alliance Director for, uh, which includes bringing in faith-based organizations, for the Service Year Alliance. And so she'll be able to draw together some of the ways in which our discussions touch on youth engagement and touch on the service, the National Service Movement. I would love uh, to start off, Jim, when you heard this whole morning of discussions, um, how, does that, how does that connect to the kind of activities that you and your volunteers do on the ground for, for your organization? Uh, I think it connects very well. I think our volunteers are much like any other volunteers who just happen to be coming to a, more of a faith motivation, perhaps, than others. Uh, it's hard to, to say, but our programs themselves that are sponsoring our volunteers are all faith-based programs. We uh, have about 200 member programs in the Catholic Volunteer Network. About 75% of them are sponsored by Catholic entities with another the other 25% from various other Christian traditions. And uh, what I heard today resonated very well with our experience. Our programs are very holistic in that the volunteers, it's not only about the work that the volunteers do, but it's uh, also about living in community and exploring their uh, faith life. Well, that's actually a really good transition. I mean, I was going to ask you, um, when you think in terms of recruitment and you think in terms of organizations that bring um, faith-based volunteers into their work and um, non-faith-based organizations that engage um, that engage faith-based volunteers. How, um, which kinds of organizations do you think uh, can most benefit and which kinds of initiatives most benefit from engaging uh, volunteers that come from that perspective? I've thought about that a lot in the last couple of days, actually, and hearing us talk on stage um, has been interesting to think about the ways that we can engage, to your point, David, young people both of faith and not of faith, but within uh, faith organizations and faith traditions here in the United States. There's many different ways that we can do this, and as a millennial, I've actually seen a lot more integration amongst young people of faith and people who are considered a very buzzwordy thing, which is called the nuns. Um, here in America today, young people who don't uh, have a faith affiliation. And we've seen a big mixture of people actually serving across different organizations in different cores from many different perspectives. So I encourage organizations, both faith-based and non-faith-based, to address young people by bringing them into that impact lens. What is the impact that you're making? Because young people of faith are looking to make an impact just like anyone else's. So that's the first major takeaway, I'd say. And the second one is actually a little bit self-critical of our own movement. One of the things that we haven't uh, done very well in the past is to acknowledge the long tradition of faith-based organizations in the service year movement. Um, and one of the things that we can do better in the future is to bring them in together with the rest of the service year movement, both domestically and internationally, um, and look at ourselves as if we're doing this together. And while we're speaking of impact, uh, looking from... Uh, USAID, AID's um, perspective and your department, where would you give an example or two of a really powerful um, engagement and partnership where the faith-based uh, volunteers are playing sort of a driving role? Last November and last month, actually, I was in Central America, and the first time I was there specifically researching this issue, I was astounded to find out that really faith-based organizations are taking the lead and speaking as an individual, not as a government official, it was my impression that they were actually leading the cause. So you have Salesians International, you have Hermanas, eh, Hermanas de María Auxiliadora, 
um, you have many Protestant churches leading this charge and actually giving guidance to government and social work agencies generally in the Central African Republic. We have been working with the Catholics, with the Protestants, with the Muslims to come together and say, look, we need to mitigate this conflict and we need to tell our each individual constituency to say, this does not need to be a religious issue. This is something that we can work out through dialogue, conflict mediation, mediation, so on and so forth. Well, the churches and uh, the Muslim community over there do not have the infrastructure, as we would say here, to have you know, social workers and get the message out there if it were not for the volunteers. These two examples, I can honestly speak from first-hand experience, would not be possible without the work of faith-based organizations and the volunteers that they rely on, which we all know is the backbone of their structure. So many people, when I talk about uh, faith-based volunteering, immediately assume that proselytizing is a piece of the work. And if not a piece of the work, it's somehow in the back of people's minds one of the reasons that they want to go to, uh, to other countries and, and meet people. How, how do you manage that? I think that's a common mis a misconception. Our volunteers are doing uh, health care and education and social services. And yes, some of them are more involved than others in pastoral ministry. But uh, I really think that our programs, uh, the faith component is more one of motivation on the part of the volunteer, him or herself. It's not so much about uh, influencing the others. In fact, if I can jump in, actually, it's one of the interesting distinctions we think about a lot at the Service yeah. Alliance is what drives somebody to serve. And if your faith drives you to serve, it can be just as worthwhile as a desire to pay back your student loans, as a desire to get a job, as something just simply idealistic inside you that makes you uh, want to do this. So I think we sometimes mix up motivation with the service itself and whether or not that includes proselytization. The other thing I'd like to note is that a number, um, besides Repair the World and Catholic Volunteer Network, which are fantastic service uh, programs best in the country, there are a number of others as well. We've got Episcopal Service here, uh, the Episcopal Service Corps, and their Young Adult Service Corps actually serves internationally. Lutheran Volunteer Corps, Avoda, Jesuit Volunteer Corps, which we've talked about already, and Young Adult Volunteers at the Presbyterian Church are just initial examples. And many of those and others actually receive AmeriCorps funding. And that um, a tenant of that is that you cannot proselytize with that, and or organizations don't. It's not a core tenant of what they do, actually. Um, and so that's, I think, another critical thing for us to remember is that these public-private partnerships, which we, we, we've been talking about a lot today, include faith-based partnerships already, and they're very deeply ingrained in American society without those transgressions um, that I think people consider when they first think about faith-based organizations. But in reality, very rarely exist. But the majority of the recipients that are faith-based organizations are coming at it from a faith-inspired, um, I don't want to say theology, but ideology, if you will, to better serve somebody else. And that's where we work. There's another sort of fusion between the way we see things changing um, in the faith-based space and the way we see things changing amongst young Americans. And a perfect example of that is the environment. We're seeing a really um, a huge sort of sea change when it comes to evangelical Americans and the way they interact with, the in with environmental change and the difference that they feel is critical both to themselves as people of faith and to the future. Um, of our nation and our world, and we see that being critical to young people as well. So there's a lot of intersections here where the way um, people of faith are interacting with development is also changing in the same way that can, that can impact youth both critically. 